Hi, and welcome to Community Hotline at Home. I'm Monica Weitzel. Living History Day has touched many veterans and students over the past 25 years. This event, put on by Remembering America's Heroes, is on hold this year due to the pandemic, but the stories live on. We'll be talking to Ken Buckles about his new book, Remembrance, which highlights the stories of the veterans honored at these events. Ken, it's great to have you here. Thank you so much. Yeah. Well, you know, we've, um, we've talked a lot and, um, and we actually went to high school together, which is just kind of a funny coincidence when we, when we figured that out. But um, you, you have been so busy over the last, what, 25 years or so with your organization, Remembering America's Heroes. It, it started when? In 2002? Was that right? It actually started, the first Living History Day was in 1996 at Milwaukee High School. This November would have been the 25th year of uh, the nonprofit was uh, started in 2002 by some Vietnam uh, veterans who were business, successful business people. And they said, you've got to form a nonprofit so you can get this into other high schools. And because of that, we've been into uh, over 44 high schools in the last 24 years. So tell me, Ken, a little bit about the Living History Day that started at Milwaukee High School and, and what all that entails. Well, it, uh, the driving force behind that was my father, who was a Marine in the Korean War, and we now know he suffered the effects of uh, post-traumatic stress, and he ended up taking his life in 1984. And that eventually led to me uh, reading and learning a lot about PTSD and that these veterans that experience combat, they come back changed forever. And... Uh, so I said, well, let's bring them to Milwaukee High, put them in a the classroom, um, feed them lunch, and recreate a Bob Hope USO show. And, and uh, it was basically student-driven, and the, the Milwaukee High students were phenomenal. So the, the veterans that you have brought to the Living History Day, which wars or which um, time periods did they, uh, did they represent? Obviously, they're gone now, but we did have four World War I veterans who attended in the late 90s and early 2000s. We had just hundreds and hundreds of World War II veterans that were uh, in almost every campaign you can imagine, air, land, and sea. Then uh, uh, we started getting a lot of the Korean War veterans, and then, of course, the Vietnam veterans. And we did this. This was before 9-11 in Iraq and Afghanistan. So uh, shockingly, when that happened, now we were bringing in those veterans and Milwaukee High Mustangs who uh, served in those uh, uh, campaigns. And so, uh, and that's they've been experienced at other high schools too. They bring back alumni that served and it's just, uh, it's been amazing to see the students at all the high schools, how they responded. So tell me, how did they respond? What, what was the interaction between the students and the veterans? How did they get to, did they have a chance to talk to each other? And, and what was the response? Yeah, they, uh, we would match up students uh, as hosts with a veteran and they were responsible for calling them and starting to build a, re a relationship with them and then meeting them at the school and make sure they get everywhere they're supposed to be. Um, they would go into the classrooms. Not all veterans would do that, though. Others would ask, could I just come and enjoy the day and, and go into a classroom? I just don't want to speak about it. And it was probably 50-50. Then there were others that would share their experiences. And they, they wouldn't talk about explicit experiences. It was, uh, um, they would open up a little bit. And for some, it was the first time they'd ever spoken in their lives. And some of the classrooms became very emotional a lot of tears uh, it, it was it was something else did you feel like this was a, a cathartic kind of experience for the veterans themselves did they did they get a lot out of it i would say for them it the number one word is, and it's every war and conflict was healing phenomenal healing. Uh, many of them that started to get PTSD counseling, many Korean and World War II veterans started getting uh, counseling because they were the generation that was told, you know, you just go home, get a job, get married, go to work, you know, raise your family, and you don't talk about it. Well, uh, that's not true. And what I've learned from all of them, they all, if they experienced combat, uh, 
they came back changed and it's and it's a struggle and the the women they're married to deserve medals because they they were there for them yeah it, it would be a, a very very difficult to come back and to talk about it especially if you were raised in a in a in sort of an environment where you were encouraged not to talk about it. So that it takes a lot of bravery just to do that. What, what were the responses of the kids? What, what kinds of things did you hear from the students? The students were the easiest sell job of all and they bought into it a hundred percent. We asked them to dress up and wear their nicest clothes and they did. Um, they, we asked them to give up their parking spots. We asked them to give up their cafeteria. We asked them to serve them lunch. And uh, they, we asked them to raise money the first several years because the school district said, we cannot, we can't trip, chip in money for this program. You're gonna have to make it happen. And the student, it, unbelievable. Uh, I could write a book on those stories. <laughs> but uh, um, their response, uh, they loved it. They just absolutely loved it. And it and they would always rank in the yearbook the number one school day, the top five, and it would always be homecoming and prom and things like that. And once Living History Day started, it was number one for years that that was their best experience. And many still say that now as adults that uh, they're so grateful they learned this. Many of them never knew it led to them uh, learning that their own grandparents were World War II vets or Korean War vets. And this was shocking, but many never knew their dads were Vietnam vets because their dads never shared it with anybody. Um, so there was a lot of, lot of healing. Yeah, it sounds like it. Now, you, you had this at, at Milwaukee for a lot of years, but you've also expanded it to other schools as well. Is that right? Yes. It was 15 years at Milwaukee, and sadly, when I retired, I offered to keep it going there, but, um, it, you know, it's such a huge day, a whole, all out of the day and the time commitment. I offered to volunteer, but they looked at it as an opportunity that it's run its course, and it didn't because there's still students and alumni and parents in the community that are not happy that about that. There was a principal named Jeff Gilbert who had taught at Milwaukee at Reynolds High School, and he found out about it and said, well, if they don't want it, bring it over here. So this, would, this November would have been their 11th Living History Day in a row, and they've uh, copied a lot of what uh, we did there, and they've done an amazing job also. And, uh, but we've taken it to a lot of high schools uh, around the state. Um, but... Milwaukee uh, kind of set a standard that most schools says there's no way we're going to compete with that because we we really went overboard. <laughs> it sounds like it was worth it, though. It sounds like it was worth it. I can oh. I I know that you have um, this year. Obviously, you couldn't do your Living History Day because of COVID, but instead, it sounds like you put your energy into finishing writing a book or a series <laughs> of books, as the case may be. Tell us about that. Well, the first book is Remembrance, Volume 1, Remembering My Veteran Friends and Guests from Living History Days. And uh, it is uh, uh, very unique in that um, it talks about the Living History Day and how it started bringing them into the, into the classroom. Then number two is uh, the last World War I veteran for America was Frank Woodruff Buckles, a relative of mine. So there's a large chapter on him. And number three is I developed uh, personal and close relationships with these veterans and became very good friends with many of them. And they would start to open up and share with me more and more and more as the years went on. And then when they got older, they decided to share even more. And I've been working on this book for, for years. And thanks to my wife, Melinda Buckles, the last five years has been pushing me to get it finished. So we're done with volume one. Well, I see the, the picture on the back, which is the cover, and I just got mine in the mail yesterday. So I have my copy of it too. And um, I'm excited to start reading it because it's really, um, 
you know, just to telling your stories, I know you have so many stories and you've been honored for the work that you've done with Remembering America's Heroes. You've been back to the White House, haven't you? And you've been, um, yeah. and, and, and then tell me about this, this coat you're wearing. Because that was something special, wasn't it? Oh, you know, I forgot to add that. It, yes, it has. It's a nationally recognized program by three presidents, uh, President Clinton, President Bush, and President Obama. Um, this jacket is a gift from uh, the Chosen Few Oregon chapter. The Chosen Few was the Korean War veterans who were surrounded at the Chosen Reservoir in, in North Korea. And their stories, uh, a lot of them I uh, recorded will be in volume two. But um, they decided, it, it took them three years to collect all these patches. And I mean, it's just phenomenal, a lot of history. And they presented it to me at an assembly in uh, 2007. Um, and a shout out to uh, Bill Chisholm, who is one of the founders uh, of the Oregon chapter. Uh, and uh, Lou Rumpakis' lovely wife, he was a Marine in the, in the, at the Chosen, but his lovely wife, um, Audrey, hand sewed all these on and still does. <laughs> As I know it's one of your, your most treasured possessions, so. As it, as it should be. What, um, what, what stands out to you as like the, I don't know, the most moving thing that has, has happened to you in, in this whole experience working with these veterans or one of them, one of the, one of the most moving? Well, I've been, I've been asked to speak at many funerals and memorial services and celebrations of life, probably over 50. And, uh, and some have been around the United States in Washington, D.C., and, and uh, in Seattle and Los Angeles. Um, and the, come to find out that you know, some of them, like one a, a famous Tuskegee Airman, Roger Bill Terry, the family, uh, his, his, his funeral was in Time Magazine and in the national news. And his story will be in volume two. But they only allowed two people to speak and I was one of them. So that was what a tremendous honor. And the other thing is it's what's so been so emotional, powerful is that I would share a story with uh, everyone at the service and the spouse and children and grandchildren would approach me afterward and say, we never heard this before. And, the, and that's very similar with veterans. Like I know nothing about my father. Um, he refused to talk about it. And, so uh, it's very common and it's frustrating, but uh, you know, a lot of these guys uh, have opened up and shared their stories that no one knows. I've had several of them said, no one knows this story. You're the first to hear it. Um, I just need to get it off my chest. What an honor to be chosen to be the one to hear it. So Ken, yeah. tell me, what, what do you hope to accomplish with your book? Obviously you wanna you know, let people know about about the veterans and things they've gone through, but what else do you hope to accomplish by, by publishing these books? I think it's so timely right now because uh, it, it touches on the suicide issue, which is a huge tragedy happening right now with our veterans. It's, it's well over 22 a day, which is what we've been led to believe. The other thing is that there's so much messages of hope and love and forgiveness and unity and commitment and sacrifice, um, just incredible that, you know, you look at what they went through and not, you know, we're talking about a, a lot of those, that generations that grew up as kids during the Great Depression and then united for this massive war, World War II, and many of them that served World War II got called back for Korea um, you know, and so the thing is that we will get through this, you know, there's so much, there's so much hope. The other thing is that, that I, one of my goals was that let people know that American men and women of all races have served, uh, have always served and still serve in our, in our armed forces and they serve with great pride. I'm glad you brought that up because race issues are, are, uh, and social justice issues are really all in the news right now. And that's, that's something mm -hmm. we're all talking about. Did you see a lot of that? I mean, have you, have you heard a lot of stories of, of racism um, as part of being in the military? Well, uh, sadly, um, for a lot of them in, in those eras, uh, there, was, there was racism and there were examples of racism um, that, that were pretty sad. 
There's also uh, examples of people that went out of their way to make sure they were treated right. You know, there's always good and bad people and yeah. throughout time. Um, but it's, uh, it's the, the other thing is that the pride that they all serve with us, you know, it's unbelievable. And, and the, the Native Americans, their pride and service is, is uh, amazing. So really you're able to highlight some of the, some of the minority groups that were perhaps not um, shown the respect and given the attention that they, that they should have gotten in the past and, and give them some of the, some of the, um, some of what they're due in their book. It sounds yeah. Like. All yeah. deserve to be yeah. removed. They, they deserve it. All, all of the veterans. I mean, it, yeah. it's a huge sacrifice to, to, to serve your country. So I think, you know, it's, it's, um, just in time for Veterans Day, what, what would you encourage people to do to, I don't know, to, you know, when they're thinking about this or when they're reading your book, um, what do you want them to know about veterans that maybe they just haven't thought about? I could give them a great tip because I've learned this over the years. Everyone think it's the acceptable thing to, you see it on a bumper sticker or a hat and go up and say, thank you for their service. I didn't know that uh, most of them, they say, oh, it's a nice touch. It's better than nothing, but it's kind of annoying. So what I've done is I see uh, World War II veterans and Korean War veterans, I'll approach them and say, excuse me, uh, sir, or excuse me, ma'am, when did you serve? And then they're, they're so happy to talk, they'll tell you what branch they were in and when they served, and they'll start adding information. Oh, I was in uh, Okinawa. And, and then, then you know, you, you can tell that it's like, wow, someone's interested in me and they, they like this. And then you can say, well, thank you so much, you know, and, and it means a lot. Now, the Vietnam vets, I've done something that's uh, I wish we could do nationwide. I see a Vietnam vet hat and I will uh, I'll go up to the sir person and I'll say, um, sir, I'm so sorry for how you were treated when you came back home. And that is, uh, that elicits an incredible response because it means so much to them. It's something that we as a country have swept under the carpet. And it's so, uh, um, it's sad. I wish we could do it as a nation and say, we're sorry for how you were treated because their stories are in volume three and many of, it's unbelievable. The stories are all so different. Yeah, yeah we, there was a lot of a lot of hatred and a lot of animosity thrown toward those Vietnam veterans for something they had no control over. And it's a, yeah. it was very sad. So, yeah. Well, I'm glad that you've been doing it and that and those tips are good. Those are good things to know. So perhaps some some of us will uh, take take you up on that and ask ask questions and find out because it does make sense to ask them and find you know learn a little bit more instead of just just thanking them. Um, yeah. Ken, the book, uh, your first volume is out now, Remembrance. You can find it on Amazon. And then I, you know, I think it's a, um, a, good, a good place to start to learn about our history. I think many of us don't learn that in high school or, you know, grade school. And it's, um, it's about time that we did. Is there anything else, is there any last takeaway you'd like to leave with our viewers um, today about veterans, about uh, Veterans Day, or, or just about um, the work that you do? Yeah, just for us Americans realize that it's, it's way under 1% of Americans who serve. It's a strictly an all-volunteer military. And because of that, they're, they're asked to do even more. And there's a, a veteran that I know that was a, a, a medic, and he 17 tours. Do you, I mean, it's, it's unfathomable. You come back. One day you're in this uh, stressful zone, the next day you're at home, and then two weeks later you're shipped back 17 times. It's just so, and there's stuff going on that we don't even know about. Um, they, they truly are uh, like first responders, you know, uh, the fire department, the police department, and then they're, they're out there doing stuff that most of us don't want to do, but we are very, very lucky. We're very fortunate. I mean, I, I'm so grateful. I, I, I was born in this country. We have so many freedoms and choices. I dreamt of playing college football and I didn't join. I got to pursue my dream and pursue my career. And, 
and I didn't and I didn't have to serve. And there's other countries where it's mandatory. So I just feel, yeah, we we really they deserve sincere appreciation. And you know, that's why we have two holidays a year. Veterans Day is to remember those who serve and have and have served. And Memorial Day is to remember those who have fallen in the line of service. Right. Thank you, Ken. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. And um, I'm looking forward to starting the book. And to all of you watching today, thank you so much. And um, be safe out there, be healthy, and be sure to um, talk to a veteran, find out more about him, and uh, check out the book. Thanks very much. We'll see you next time. Bye.